ever glanced at the specs of ChatGPT, Cloud, or Llama and seen numbers like 500 million, 1.5 billion, or even 70 billion parameters thrown around, these massive figures sound impressive. But what exactly is a parameter? Why do these models need billions of them? How are these parameters created in the first place? And what mysterious thing happens when they work together? Well, all you need is to stick around for a couple of minutes here and I show you that LLMs are not these mysterious and black box weirdos that spit out text and that parameters are surprisingly very simple concepts that unfortunately stayed in layers of complexity and mystery in the mainstream language. Think of parameters as the brain cells of AI models. Just as our brains contain billions of neurons making countless connections, these AI systems use parameters to form their own neural networks. But here's the fascinating part. While our brains develop over decades of living and learning, these AI models have to pack all their intelligence into parameters during a single intensive training process. I'm talking about weights and biases. Yes, these are the parameters. By the way, this is the third episode in the Neural Networks Explanation series. In case you'd like to take a look at the previous two as well, I will leave their links for you. Previously, we learned how inputs such as the words you type enter the neural network. Here's where a weight and a bias term are added to each input word. But before getting into more details, let's review this one minute clip from episode one. Imagine you're trying to perfect a recipe for a fluffy croissant. You've got all the ingredients, but the key to success lies in the delicate balance of flour, salt, sugar, and butter. Too much of one and the whole dish is thrown off. That's basically what's happening in the neural network, where the weights and biases are the secret ingredients that help the network come up with an accurate response. Weights are like the ratio of flour to water in a croissant dough. They determine how much importance to give to each input feature so that the network can learn to recognize patterns in the data and make predictions. But weights alone aren't enough. You need biases to balance them out. Biases are also numerical values as constants, which are added to the weighted sum of the inputs in order to offset the result before the input travels to a neuron. Back to today's video. So let's see how this weighted sum of inputs plus a bias actually works. We can use a simple coordinate system to show how weights and biases look in a simple linear equation such as this. Initially, we assign random arbitrary values as weight and bias parameters. These will be eventually tweaked along the network as we will see soon. But for now, let's randomly assign the value of 1 as the weight and 0 as the bias. If we plug in these values, it will give us this familiar linear equation and this line represents a single neuron's output for any number as x or input. If we keep the bias value the same but increase the weight, the slope of this line increases. If we decrease the weight, for example going to a negative value, the slope of this line decreases to a negative. Now, the bias parameter which is added to the weighted sum of inputs is supposed to offset this function. For example, plugging in the value of 1 for the bias parameter offsets this line upward and decreasing the bias term to negative values will shift this line downward. So basically, the weight changes the slope of this line and the bias shifts its position up and down. As you see, these parameters or weights and biases are adjustable. Actually, what we mean by training a neural network is nothing more than gradually adjusting these parameters on large amounts of data, for example, text, and observing when they give the wrong result and readjust these parameters again until we get the correct or intended result. The super fascinating part is that certain combinations of all these parameter values end up giving you the precise output you wanted. Believe me or not, this is the exact goal of any neural network. So the output of this single neuron, which is the weighted sum of inputs plus the bias parameter, enters the neuron's core function, which is an activation function. I have briefly talked about them before, but as a quick review, activation functions are mathematical functions that decide whether this output number is good enough to be passed to the next layer's neuron or should it be ignored, for example, passed as zero. I will talk about these in more detail in the following episodes, but for now, let's see how it works with our sample input data of 7 words with some arbitrary values. 
These input values in reality will be the embedding values we learned previously. We are going to multiply each input word's value by a random weight, sum them, and then add a bias value such as 1 to get the output of this first neuron. Let's use a very simple activation function such as the step function, which looks at the output value. And if it's more than 0, sends this output as 1. And if it's 0 or less, sends it as 0. This new output will be the input for the neurons in the next layer. This process is repeated until the last layer when the neuron with the highest value is chosen as the final output of the entire neural network. This could be the next word in the sequence of words as we've seen in this video, an audio signal in a series of signals, or a pixel of an image. So essentially those 500 million, 1.5 billion, or even 70 billion parameter models that I talked about earlier are nothing more than weights and biases in giant networks of interconnected layers that have been adjusted to predict the output as accurately as possible. Over many iterations, these networks learn to be less wrong by reducing the error. So when we are using a pre-trained model like ChatGPT or Cloud, this means they are already trained to give us the correct output. That's the reason you see these chatbots spew out the words so fast and so human-like.